gentlemen, meet Mr. Turing. We were to work together then. We were going to break an unbreakable Nazi code and win the war. Oh. Hi there, I'm Gordon Bonus with Daily Extra, and today I'm talking with Morton Tildum, the director of The Imitation Game, a fantastic biopic of Alan Turing. Thanks so much for talking with me. Thank you. The movie is a fantastic combination of war action, caper, buddy flick, social drama. How do you describe the mix? It's a, uh, that's exactly what Alan Turing is. He's, he's, the, the story is so rich and it's so many layered. This man, you know, he fathered the computer science. He cracked the Enigma code. He shortened the war, saved millions of life, and suffered such, you know, injustice. You're Norwegian. In fact, your 2012 film Headhunters is probably the most successful Norwegian film ever. Thank you. Uh, what does being an outsider bring to your, I think it's both a celebration and an indictment of British values? I think it's important to come in and being, res you know, I want to be respectful to the story, to the time, but also have some like an outsider's view of the whole thing. And I think that actually does something to, to the, to the uh, story. And I, I wanted to lead people through this mystery, this enigma of, the, of this brilliant man. I came into it because it, to me it's a tribute to people who are different, to people who's not, you know, not normal and celebrating that. Benedict Cumberbatch had me almost in tears right from that very first scene where he's just sitting alone quietly in the police examining room. He can do something with, in a very still moment that I don't think other actors can do. Benedict is phenomenal and it's, you know, there's, there's no recordings of Alan Turing. How he walks, how he moves, how he talks. We have to sort of like invent that and put that together piece by piece. So, so we wanted to be respectful to him. At the same time, we, we didn't want to idolize him. We, you know, we wanted to sort of like make something true and, and, and uh, heartfelt. And it's, Benedict is amazing. You know, when he's in front of the camera, Benedict disappears and Alan Turing's pop up. What if I don't fancy her in that way? Can't huh? tell anyone, no. It's illegal. The idea that the holder of secrets has power. Yeah. The who holds, who you share the secret with yeah, has yeah. power. That's, those are the, the way that you tie the, the, the personal drama into the political drama is, is, was that in the script? How much of that do you have to bring forward? I mean, we developed it, it was in the script, but it's, it's also there in the life, you know. It's, it's such a huge secrecy, the whole, the whole everything that did it, Bletchley, everything was burned after the war, it was kept locked for like 30 years. And, and also he had all these personal secrets, you know, as, as a gay man. And uh, then it was his relationship to Christopher and the loss of Christopher, which, you know, shaped his whole life. So, so and then you have the, the codes, the thing, they have to keep, you know, breaking the enigma secret. So it's, it's like secrets upon secrets upon secrets. So that's, that's one of the, you know, recurring themes of this movie. And it's, it's that's why it's such a fascinating real, uh, real life uh, thriller there. His, his, his life was just amazing. It was just, this awkward mathematician who ended up in the center of these world events. It really is the case of you, truth is stranger than f fiction, isn't it? I know. If I invented everything that happened, no one would believe us. Mm -hmm.